Coming up next, we're going to talk about Windows Hello and presence sensing uh, related features in Windows 11, one of which is brand new to version 23H2. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. The following show is brought to you through the generosity of people like you. Thanks. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Hands on Windows. I'm Paul Throt. And this week, we're going to talk about two related features, uh, Windows Hello and Presence Sensing, part of a suite of features that Microsoft has uh, to make it easier to sign into Windows 11 and then automatically lock the computer when you're done using it as well. Uh, there's a third feature actually called Dynamic Lock. We're going to ignore that. <laughs> it has now been superseded by presence sensing. Um, it's not very secure. It's not very fast. It's Bluetooth based, so it's kind of unreliable. Um, I think it's semi useless. Uh, but the idea behind dynamic lock is that you would pair your computer with a Bluetooth device, which has to be a phone. It can't just be a, any arbitrary, like a little track or anything. It has to be a phone. And when you walk away from the computer and it loses the Bluetooth signal, it will lock your computer. Um, if you're actually serious about security and worried about someone using your computer, uh, that will be about two minutes too late. Um, so I, even when this was the only solution, I did not recommend presence sensing, but now we have something better. Um, and so we'll step through that. We'll actually highlight that part of it. I think that's uh, kind of the more important, important piece because it's, um, it's new. And I think most people aren't familiar with it yet, but oops, I opened the wrong app. So, but we can look at yeah, the windows hello stuff. So, I think most people are familiar with Windows Hello. Uh, Windows Hello is a set of methods, most of which are biometric uh, for authenticating onto your computer so you can sign in securely without having to type in a password. Um, one of them is mandatory and it's not biometric and that's the pin. So when you step through Windows Update and the out-of-box experience, you sign in with your Microsoft account. Uh, one of the first things you'll have to do is create a pin, right? Typically four numbers, but you can do uh, different lengths and you can also add alphanumeric characters if you want, but uh, usually easiest uh, with, um, you know, four numbers. So we're, we're used to this on phones, ATM machines, whatever, um, pretty basic. So this will always be configured. Uh, it is configured on this computer. Of course, I can change the pin. I cannot remove it. There's no way to remove a pin when you sign in with a Microsoft account or for that matter, a work or school account or an enter ID as we now call that. Um, and then we have these other options. Um, this particular computer does not have facial recognition or fingerprint recognition capabilities. Not a big deal, but um, in both cases, what you could do is uh, click a setup button if this feature was available and step to a very short wizard where you, you know, move your thumb around or your finger or whatever on the, the fingerprint reader and you let it uh, do its little star pattern on your face. And then it will recognize you in the future when you, you know, walk up in the case of a camera or will... Um, or when you, you know, when you press the button, some computers have kind of nice pass throughs. Uh, I'm using a Lenovo ThinkPad right now that when you power up the computer by pressing in the, the power button, the fingerprint reader is based in the button. And so it actually passes that through. So by the time Windows actually loads, it has stored uh, the fingerprint it just got and it will log you in then. So that's kind of neat. Um, and you can do that kind of stuff. Um, just one tip for Windows Hello. Nothing is, uh, uh, well, that's not actually true. Um, not much has changed with Windows Hello, but uh, from just sort of a basic standpoint, it makes sense to um, uh, do two authentications, right? So in the case of facial recognition, if you wear glasses, especially uh, do one with glasses, one without, uh, do one in low light, one in regular light, um, do two fingers, right? Um, one of the stupid, stupidest <laughs> error messages in Windows is when you sign in with a finger and it's, uh, it can't read it for some reason. It says, try another finger and you only have one finger authenticated. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't have another finger to try. So you have to keep using the same finger, obviously. Um, tied to this is this security key, uh, um, entry. Um, we're going to talk about security keys as part of a future episode that's about pass keys, which is a, a new modern authentication type. But this is the this is a typical example of a security key. This is a UB key in this case for USB. And uh, before we had pass keys, um, this was another way to um, authenticate on a computer in a way that was highly secure, right? And so this particular one uh, supports USB-C, obviously, but also uh, NFC, and it has a little fingerprint reader on it. And so I can authenticate myself that way. I could have done this on this computer. I didn't set this up here because 
it's a desktop computer. It's under the um, it's under the desk, and it's a little harder to use. But there's some interesting uh, use cases that uh, security keys and pass keys meet. I don't want to get too far into this because again, I want to do uh, an episode about this. But a lot of online accounts support pass keys now, and uh, pass keys are just um, authentications that are stored on. Uh, a secure device. And so it, we know that it's secure because you're signing in in a secure manner. And on a Windows PC, what that means is you're using Windows Hello. And that could be uh, your PIN, it could be facial or fingerprint recognition, it doesn't matter. Um, and when you go to the web, any browser, and you go to authenticate into your Google account is a good example, um, it will use uh, a passkey that's stored on your computer if it's there. If it isn't, you can use a passkey on your phone or some other device. And then it will offer it to save that passkey on your computer and what's new to windows 11 version 23 h2 is that will be protected with windows hello right so that's kind of a neat new feature in the operating system and i'm gonna i'm gonna take a short digression and see if i could possibly get this to work but if i go to gmail.com um i've already oh, i've already signed in <laughs> so uh yeah that's the problem all right so yeah i, I might not be able to do this let me uh try that again with a different account i'll add an account yeah i'll try my gmail account so gmail is an account i have in fact um set up a passkey on this computer i believe but it's asking me to do it yeah authenticate with 2fa right so two-factor authentication on my phone as we do like through a uh, an authenticator app. I'm using um, this one is the Google version, I believe. And I sent in, yeah, so I've already done it. So in, in the future, if I hadn't already done it, it would offer to. So it will pop up this little um, dialogue and say, hey, we can save this. It's a little big, but <laughs> we can uh, protect your passwords with Windows Low now. And what this means is that um, you will be asked in certain conditions where security is involved to just, you know, use your fingerprint or do the face scan or type in your pen. Uh, and so it kind of integrates with your online accounts. So that was kind of a high level <laughs> blow through. I'll, I'll uh, like I said, we're going to do an episode just on passkeys. I think it's a big enough uh, topic and it's the one major change to um, in window to windows hello in, um, version 23 H2. But the other big change, uh, that is sort of a related complementary feature, something called presence sensing. And this is actually a set of features that uses a hardware proximity sensor that your PC has to have. Um, right now it's not something that you can buy as an add on, but it would typically come in a laptop. You'll have, it will be up in the, the top lid of the laptop next to the webcam and next to the IR sensor, if you have windows hello. And, uh, what it does is detect whether you or anyone else, right, uh, walks up to the computer or walks away from the computer. And until Windows 11 23H2, um, PC makers would have to implement that functionality themselves. So they would put a proximity sensor in the computer and they would have to write, write or buy some software that would wake up and then uh, turn off the display and then later sleep the computer under those conditions. Now it's a formal part of Windows 11, so they don't have to do that anymore. There's a there's just a standard UI for that, and it's in the settings app, and it is in that same area we were just in um, under account settings. This particular computer does not have present sensing, but I do have some screenshots that will show you how it works on PCs that do have it. I would say right now, very rare. It, uh, typically, just premium, expensive computers would have it, and even then, it's it's not a it's not guaranteed. I of the several computers I use. Regularly, only one of them does have it, and that's where I took these screenshots. So the way you can find out if you have it is to open the start menu and just type in, you have to, you actually have to type in the whole thing oddly, but if you type in presence sensing and all you get is what you see here, which is just web results, you don't have it. <laughs> so I already know this one doesn't have it. Um, here's what you would see if you did have it. And so you can see there's a settings block um, and then a list of things you could um, click on. I would. I mean, any of this would actually get you to the same place. Um, the other way you can do it is just, of course, open the settings app. And if you go to power and battery and expand this screen and sleep section, uh, oops, sorry, uh, every computer will have the options you see below. But those two options you see at the top, turn off my screen when I leave and wake my device when I approach, indicate that you have presence sensing there. Um, I, these interfaces are a little bit confusing, I think, to people. But when you see a 
a little arrow like this. That means you can click on it and it will either expand in place or open a new page. And so I, I had expanded uh, screen and sleep. And so that arrow changed. So this is expanded. These two options, you can click them on or off, right? But you could also just click anywhere in the middle here. And if you do, it actually goes to a different um, location. And it just has a link here to present settings, you know, so this, that this, you will eventually get to this interface, right? So these things are typically off by default, although uh, brand, I should say new, brand new computers. We talk about the out of box experience you get when you sign in for the first time. One of the screens is for privacy. And we talked about um, uh, the way you should configure your privacy settings, right? In a previous episode, uh, if you do have a presence uh, a proximity sensor, sorry, in your computer, there will be a presence option in that list, right? And so instead of having six privacy settings, you'll have seven. Uh, the seventh is presence. Uh, it should be off by default, uh, but that's something you can enable because there's privacy concerns with this a little bit, right? Um, but regardless, you can come in here and configure it on or off. And then there's a couple of options. So once you turn it on, uh, these sub options become available. Frankly, most people are going to want to leave this exactly the way this is. Um, I, I've, in my experience, this has worked very, very well. Unlike um, that, oops, sorry. Um, unlike the um, uh, the feature I don't recommend, dynamic lock, um, this one actually works really, really well, right? So um, you're going to get, uh, you know, obviously, if your computer's sitting on a desk, um, uh, this is something my wife has experienced. Her laptop has this feature. Um, you walk by the desk and the computer powers on, right? <laughs> like it wakes up because it senses somebody there, right? So anybody could wake it up. But the reason this is nice, uh, other than the obvious, it's waking up your computer. It's auto. Uh, it, it's locking the computer, dimming the display, and then in some amount of time, based on your power management settings, um, putting it to sleep, right? Um, the reason this is good is there are, the reason it can be better, or one of the reasons this is great is it also works with Windows Hello, right? Um, especially if you have uh, facial recognition going, right? So you walk up to your computer, think about how this might work normally. You'd have to hit some button or some key or whatever, move the mouse, and you're waiting for this thing to kind of power on. But if you have this feature, you walk up to the computer and it senses you and it does all that for you before you get there. And then you sit down, it scans your face and you're in. You don't have to really do anything. It's kind of a, it's a nice thing, but it's also really secure, which is really great. Um, as I said, you know, some computers have that pass through on the power button. Um, if the fingerprint reader is there, the the ThinkPad I'm using right now does. And that's kind of a nice thing too. Same thing. You're powering the thing on. Well, you shouldn't have to power on if it's a, uh, sensing you, but you can just walk up and tap it and it kind of gets you in. So you can configure this to your heart's content. But like I said, I think most people are going to want to leave that um, as is. So that's I, I don't know what to call this. It's sort of like that's what's new in authentication, <laughs> you know, uh, with Windows uh, 11 version 23H2, except for one missing piece, which is that passkey piece. Uh, piece. And we're going to look at that in a future episode because I think this kind of completes the security feature, uh, this well, the, the authentication security functionality in Windows 11. Um, and it, it really makes this new version of Windows 11, um, you know, it's more secure and easier to use, which is a wonderful combination. So... I hope you found this useful. Uh, good luck finding a computer with present sensing, but they're out there. <laughs> um, we'll be back every week with a new episode of the podcast. Uh, we post new episodes on Thursdays. You can find out more and see what's available at twit.tv slash H-O-W. want to thank everyone for watching and thank you especially to members of Club Twit for your support. We really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next week. Thank you.